What up, what up, Wimbush here. And recently I was working on a project for Transformers where I had all my animations done inside of Cinema 4D and then I brought them into Unreal Engine and I did this all using Olympic files. And so I wanna show you the tricks that I use to be able to bring my files over from Cinema 4D using Olympic files into Unreal Engine in a proper way to set it up for texturing so that we can have separate objects being textured separately. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So to get started, I want to show you my setup inside of Cinema 4D. This will work for Blender as well, but this is a Cinema Artist. That's what I'm using here, but you can use any platform out there. So I'm going to get started by just making a plane. So I'm going to come over here, make a plane, and I'm just going to scrunch it down just a tad bit. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to make a cloner. Now I'm going to take this plane, bring it into my cloner. Let's make the orientation plus X so that it's looking straight up and down. Then when my plane selected, just gonna make it a little bit, just to kind of mimic like a screen there. And then I'm gonna come back to cloner. Let's just make it linear. And we're just gonna drag it out. So we're not gonna do anything complex. The most important thing here is just showing you how we could take the texture of these three different planes and bring them together in Unreal so that each plane will have its own UV map on it. And so next, what I'm gonna do is up here in the upper right hand corner where it says material manager, I'm gonna left click on this. But before I actually make a material, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to use standard. Standard seems to be the best way to do it, not using Redshift because I am using Olympic files. So now that I'm in standard mode, I'm going to come over here to the plus symbol. I'm going to make a new default material. And then I'm just going to name this one number one. Now, I found that if you name these differently, it's going to give you better results than if you just have them all with the same material and bring it into Unreal. Sometimes it gets confused. So naming your material separate for each UV is the way to go. So I'm just going to make this one a standard color. Let's just say red. And then I'm going to hold down control, left click, drag it over. And let's make this one two. And I'm going to change this color to maybe like green. Then I'm going to do it again for the third one. Name this three. And we're just going to drag this down and make it blue. So with my plane over here, I'm just going to hold down control and drag out two more times. And then I'm going to take each one of these materials here and I'm going to put them on a plane. So now we have a material per plane here. Again, we have three planes and this is going to represent our three items that we're bringing into Unreal. Now let's add some animation here as well. Just something simple. So I'm going to come down here to my rotation, add a keyframe, come all the way down here to the end. And let's just rotate this by 180 degrees. Add another keyframe. Now if I click on play, now you can see that it's just doing a 360 spin rotation in which I could just drag these out a little bit further. So with this simple setup, I'm going to export this out as an Olympic file and then we're going to bring it into Unreal Engine. So in order to do that, I'm going to select my cloner and then over in the top left where it says file, I'm going to left click on this. Then I'm going to come down here to export. Then I'm going to come right here to where it says Olympic and I'm going to click on a gear. Now, the reason I do this is just so I can set it up before I export some of my frames. I have it at 90 frames. I like using selection only just in case I have a more complex scene and I only want certain items to export. That's always helpful there and everything else. I'm just going to leave at default. So now I'm going to click OK. And I have a folder already made and I'm just going to name this one example.abc for Olympic. And then I'm going to click on save. And now we have saved out an Olympic file. Now, before I bring it into Unreal, I usually like to just test it first. So I'm going to take my Olympic file, drag it into Cinema 4D. I'm going to click on OK. And then I just look. And the main thing that we're looking at is just making sure that each one of these planes actually has a UVW tag on it, in which it does. Now, it's not going to bring over the materials per se, but as long as it has the UV tags on it, that means we can actually do the retexturing instead of Unreal. Then if I just drag it through here, on the timeline, you can see the animations are baked in as well. So now that we have our Olympic file, let's open up Unreal Engine so that we can drag it in and get that set up as well. So I'm using Unreal Engine 5.4 right now. 5.5 is still on preview, so I just want to use a more stable version. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag in my Windows Explorer. And I'm going to take my Olympic file. And I'm just going to drag it into my content browser down here. Now this is going to be important. So I'm going to select this up here just to make sure everything in here is selected. Now import type, I wanna make sure I do geometry cache because we did have animations. If we didn't have animations, we could just do static mesh. But the important thing here is if I scroll down, well actually where it says frame end, you wanna make sure that you put the right amount of frames in there, which we had at 90. But this right here, where it says geometry cache, and this is flatten tracks, you wanna turn this off. 
Now, if you flatten the tracks, it's going to bring it in as one big UV. So if you go to texture it, it's going to texture it across all the different geometry in there, which we don't want. If you uncheck that box right there, now each one of these pieces will be able to be textured individually. So once you're happy with that, we're just going to click on import. And now we have it down here inside of our content browser. So if I click and drag it into my scene, and let's just swoop around here because it's going to be one sided for right now. It's not textured. You can see that we have it here inside of our scene, but we don't have any materials on there. But if we look under the materials, you can see that they are UV mapped here on the right hand side. So if we come down here, let's just make a new material. Again, I'm just going to name it one, just something generic. Double click on it. And then I'm just going to change out the base color. Let's like just purple here. And then over here on the lower left hand corner where it says two sided, I'm going to select this to save it. So now we have our two sided material. Now with my example still selected, I'm going to left click, drag it into this first slot. And now you can see that we have a texture on this far back one right here. Now, if I just click and drag this over, make a copy of it, we could just change out the color of this one. So let's just say maybe like this orange, I'm going to click on save. Now let's add it to this other slot. Now you can see that we have the orange one here in the middle. So you can see exactly what's going on. We have a material that's able to be on our limbic file, but it's for the individual pieces, which is really nice. So again, I'm going to click on save and I'm going to drag it into this slot. So now you can see our limbic file has materials for each one of these objects. Now, if you wanted to see it animated, all you have to do is come up here in the top left to where we have this clipboard, left click on this. We're going to add a level sequence and then I'm just going to save it out. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it at default there. And now we have our sequencer, which is our timeline down here. And if I take my Olympic file, click and drag it into my sequencer. And right here where we have your Olympic file, you want to click the plus sign and then come down here to geometry cache. Now, if we play it through, you can see the animation is baked in there as well. And this is the proper way to bring in Olympic files in the Unreal Engine so that you can properly UV texture everything individually if that's how you have your scene set up. Now, this is the workflow that I've been using a lot this past year. I know we do have the plugin with Cineware, but I found that using Olympic files are a lot more flexible and a lot more stable. So that's the route that I've been going. And that's how I was able to discover this workflow here. So if this helped you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below. And of course, subscribe if you're new. And until next time, stay fresh keep creating and I catch you in that next video. I see you soon. Take care.